Coming in at number 73, we have Minnesota Vikings inside linebacker Eric Kendricks. And, you know, this one's pretty interesting to me because I, I felt like ever since he and fellow teammate and linebacker Anthony Barr, ever since they were both drafted by the Vikings out of UCLA in 2014 and 15 respectively, I felt like it's been very difficult to, to – you know, give a clear-cut answer to the question, who is the better player? They've almost been indistinguishable in a sense. And, you know, obviously they've had their – they've each had their strengths and weaknesses. Barr, he's a better pass rusher. He's probably more stout against the run, whereas Kendricks, he's more rangy and better off in coverage. It wasn't really until 2019, this past year on film, when I, I think we finally got an answer to that question. And, you know, obviously, as you can see by the rating – Kendricks, I have him as number 73. Anthony Barr, he was featured in my number 98 video. If you haven't seen that one, make sure to you know, click the link above my head or I'll, I'll put it down in the description below. But I think that Kendricks, he just took a massive step forward in terms of his ability to cover guys. And as I said, he's always been very solid there. But this year to me, he just took the next step as, you know, we often talk about lockdown corners on the outside, but he was like a lockdown middle linebacker. You know, this man, you're going to say he had no interceptions. How can he be that great? Well, he led the league in pass deflections at 12 from that linebacker spot. But more importantly, it's not just those plays that are impressive. It's the ones where he's not even being targeted because he's doing such a great job at locking down these quicker and smaller backs out of the backfield and, and really the more dynamic tight ends up the seams and across the middle. It's just so impressive, you know, what he's able to do in the passing game as well as in the running game. To me, have him as, as not only the 73rd best player in the NFL, but, but linebacker number four on my list. And first things first, in terms of what makes Kendrick so special, to me, you've got to start with his, his short area quickness as, you know, it's what allows him to not only be, be solid against the run as it lets him evade these bigger and stronger offensive linemen before they're able to get hands on, but it's also what allows him to keep up with and mirror and match these smaller, more dynamic running backs out of the backfield on routes. And, you know, on this play, this is an example in the running game, but look at how even though he's not moving very much on this play, he's, you know, maybe one, two yards tops. Watch how he's able to work work to his left as he's starting to read the misdirection back towards this B-gap. Then once he sees Corey Lindsley climbing up to him, how he's able to jump around him, evade him to his right. But then once he once he realizes he might have just overshot Aaron Jones, he's able to slip back into his left around Lindsley and, and make a nice solo tackle in the hole. It just plays like these where – where, you know, a guy without that short area quickness, they're probably getting blocked by Winsley, and this is this is a much bigger gain, but but that's not Eric Kendricks, because as you see, he's just able to evade that the bigger, slower offensive lineman and and get a solo tackle. And here's another really solid example. This time it's it's against Golden Tate and the Giants, as what you're gonna see is Tate runs a nice little stop route over the middle where Kendricks, who has you know kind of the hook curl responsibilities in the middle of this Viking zone defense. We're going to see is how he's able to just so quickly transition from a back pedal into a forward sprint and, and ultimately get a nice drive on this football and force an incompletion. And, you know, I don't want to just say it's very rare that a linebacker is able to do this, but there's a reason that this play is in the playbook for the Giants, right? There's a reason that Daniel Jones is looking at Golden Tate here. It's because once Tate has that leverage on the middle linebacker or whoever he's going against, it's very rare that that guy is able to recover quick enough to, to break up this ball at the, at the catch point. But, but Kendricks is because he's not just that normal linebacker or safety who might be covering that zone up the middle. He's, he's so effective in coverage, and a lot of that is due to his short area quickness. And I called this next one a lateral mobility because it's just so impressive to me how fluid Kendricks is in his movement skills side to side, right? So on this play, what you're going to have is the Bears and David Montgomery running towards the right. Kendricks, he's going to start by shuffling in that direction to his left as he's looking for the hole that he's going to meet Montgomery in to bring him down for a tackle. But then Montgomery, he doesn't see anything develop, so he tries to cut it back towards the back side. But look at how, whereas most linebackers, they might get stuck on a play like this. So look at how Kendricks is just so easily able to, to transition from that shuffle left to ultimately a shuffle and sprint towards his right as he's able to track down Montgomery in space and bring him down. It just plays like these that are so impressive because – Again, most linebackers, once he makes that cut back, they're probably out of the play, but not Kendricks because he is just so fluid in and out of those cuts to his left and to his right. And even though I titled this one Chain of Direction, it's essentially the same idea as that previous play. This time, though, what you're going to see him do is you know, drifting towards his left as he's covering Devontae Booker out of the backfield. But then once Booker puts that right foot in the ground and breaks inside on the angle route, what I want you to really notice is how, how easily it is for Kendrick's just mirror and match him as he as he really stays right in his hip pocket and is able to break up this pass across the middle. You know, it's just so impressive because, you know, this is why we've seen the emergence of guys like McCaffrey and Kamara in, in the modern NFL. You know, routes like these, option routes out of the backfield, or in this case, angle routes out of the backfield, 
they're just so easy for these guys to, to get open on because linebackers are typically slower and stiffer players. Well, well, Kendricks is an exception to the rule, and that's what you see here as, again, just look at how he was able to plant that left foot in the ground, flip his hips, turn, and, and just recover and, and make the play on the ball. It's just so impressive because, again, very few linebackers are making plays like these, and a lot of it is through that short area quickness and change of direction ability. And I call this next one range because, no, it's not the craziest sideline to sideline play, but it is a very good example of Kendricks covering a, a pretty substantial area of ground in a very short period of time. And that's what you're going to have as the Lions are going to run a quick hitting play action pass to, you know, initially they're going to fake it to J.D. McKissick, but then try and hit him out of the backfield. Look at how Kendricks, how there's just no wasted movement as he's flowing from the defensive left hash to the, the right the right numbers on this, on this play. And look at how he's able to just, again, have no wasted movement and just, just flow with the play. And then once he reads that it is a pass, it is going to McKissick, how he, how he shows off that burst, that, that quick acceleration as he, as he essentially flies in there and forces another incompletion at the catch point. It just plays like this that are so impressive because you know, he's not mindlessly falling from sideline to sideline. He's, he's falling with a purpose. And once he recognizes, okay, this ball might be going to McKissick, you see, you see him put a foot in the ground and show off that, that same short area quickness they had against Golden Tate, for example, across the middle. It's just, it just plays like these where he's already putting everything together. And you know, it's really what starts to make him so effective as a coverage linebacker. And if you're tracking so far, you know, he has the lateral mobility, he has the short area quickness, change of direction skills, the range. What does that mean? It means that he should be pretty effective in man and zone coverage, right? And, and is he ever? You know, so here you're going to have him manned up against Aaron Jones out of the backfield on a wheel route. And is it the best coverage? No, but it's enough for Eric Kendricks to, you know, even though Jones does certainly have a step on him there, Kendricks is still able to, you know, show off the hand-eye coordination, the ball skills to get it, get a hand in there and force an incompletion at that catch point. And, you know, even though I, I kind of think that if, if Rodgers did do a better, a better job of floating this ball over the top, I think it might have been a catch. Ultimately, it wasn't a catch, so I can't penalize him for that. And instead, it's a nice example of him playing man coverage in space, making a play on a ball. And even though Kendricks is very good in man coverage, that's undeniable. He, he's, he's on another level in zone, and that's what makes him not only so fun to watch, but it's what makes him, as I said in the intro, in my opinion, one of, if not the best coverage linebackers in the NFL because you know he's just so comfortable in space, and he's so special in terms of his ability to just ignore the noise and read and react to his keys, right? And that's what you're going to have here as you know, watch him on this play by George Kittle, who's going to run an inward breaking route into this hook curl zone across the middle. Look at how Kendricks, after a certain point, right about here, his eyes are no longer on George Kittle. He doesn't care what George Kittle is doing. He could run an out route, a streak route, a corner, a deep post. It doesn't matter to Kendricks. What matters to Kendricks is what Jimmy Garoppolo is doing because he knows that, that that football is going to take him to the catch point, right, which is where he can make a play. So what I want you to see is how fluid he is, not only, you know, playing backwards in space, but look at how he essentially – does just a great job of mirroring what Jimmy G is doing with his eyes and how that's going to take him to the ball as he essentially runs George Kittle's route for him two steps ahead of him because even though he never actually looks at Kittle and never sees, oh, that's an inward break route, he's just watching Jimmy G's eyes and letting Jimmy G's eyes tell him what the route is. And as a result, he's able to go up there at the catch point, disrupt Kittle, and force an completion. It just plays like these that are so rare to see amongst linebackers because so often they're scared about getting beat in space and that, you know, they're going to just turn and run with Kittle. And, you know, when you, when you leave your back facing the ball to, with a guy like Kittle, he's often able to go up there and make a play because you don't really know where the ball is. Well, Kendricks, his eyes never leave that ball the entire play to the point that he doesn't know where Kittle is. He doesn't care where Kittle is. He cares where the ball is going, and that's what allows him to, to be so effective in zone coverage on plays like these. And, and ultimately – on, on plays like these as well, it's in the very same game, what you're going to see again is just how he reads his keys, Jimmy Garoppolo's eyes, and that takes him to the ball. Look at how he's able to, on this play, he never once looks at Debo Samuel running this curl route, right? But look at how fluid he is dropping back, following Jimmy G's eyes, and allowing him to take him to, to take Kendricks to the catch point, right? As look at how he's able to just sink back in, in zone and make a beautiful make a beautiful catch on a ball on, on a route that he's able to undercut that he never saw. That's, what, that's just what's so impressive because, again, so many linebackers, they're going to be distracted, whether it's by Kyle Juszczyk here, whether it's they're going to be caught up by Tevin Coleman there. He just cares about Garoppolo's eyes, and that's why he's on another level in my eyes because 
because there's so few linebackers doing this. This is cornerback safety stuff, and he's a middle linebacker. It's just so impressive. And I know so many people are probably seeing the heading ball skills, and they're saying, "How this man had zero interceptions in the regular season last year. How does he have ball skills? Well, to me, there's so much more to ball skills than just, you know, the soft hands at the catch point to haul it in. There's also the timing and hand-eye coordination that's required to – to interrupt and disrupt that that ball at the catch point. And that's what I more so want to focus on here as, you know, this man, again, he led all linebackers in in pass deflections with 12. So, you know, I just want to talk about how here, you know, on such a short screen pass, how it's impressive to me, how he's able to not only fight off this block by the Redskins left guard, but also just before the ball is able to get there to Wendell Smallwood, how he's able to toss that left hand in there from his hit pocket and and force another down for the Redskins offense. No, obviously it's not as it's not as nice as an interception, but it is a very very nice play by by linebacker that we don't see on that regular of a basis. And I love this next play not only because it is another pass deflection, but more so because of the context. Right, it's a 24 to 28 game. Vikings are leading the Cowboys with about 45 seconds left. Cowboys are on their way down the field with you know a game winning drive potentially in the mist where you're going to have a fourth and five critical conversion here. And what you're going to see is Dak Prescott, he's going to try and challenge Kendricks off the snap essentially on this quick out by Zeke Elliott. And and what you're going to see is Kendricks just have absolutely none of that as he's able to not only mirror and match and show off that man coverage ability that we talked about earlier, but again, just the the absolute ball skills to to lay out and make a beautiful, a beautiful deflection this time with his right hand as he comes over the top. And, you know, what's so interesting to me is how you're going to see off the snap, look at this, like, Kendricks, he has, he's shading Zeke to the inside. What should that mean? That should mean that a quick hitting out route, that, that'll be absolutely money here. And that's probably what, what Dak is seeing as he's almost predetermining this throw as what you're going to see is he doesn't really look anywhere else. Well, well, what happens? Kendricks is just so able to, to change directions in space. And, you know, he, he's going to show off the short area quickness there as he's able to just recover to the ball at that catch point and, and lay out full body extended and make just a beautiful deflection there to, to really seal the game for the Vikings. And it just plays like these that are so impressive because, again, there's very few linebackers that comfortable in space, but Kendricks is undoubtedly one of them. And even though I referred to his ability to read and react to the QB's eyes earlier in zone coverage, it's also really impressive. I was able to just quickly diagnose and, and react to what's going on in the running game as well. And, you know, that's what we're going to have here as watch how he's able to just ignore the noise that's generated by this Lions offensive play call as they're going to bring uh, J.D. McKissick on a little jet motion across the backfield, fake a handoff to him, and quickly pitch out to Ty Johnson. And, you know, with Kendricks already shifted over to this left side towards the bunch side of the formation, it's it's really necessary for him to not bite on this fake to McKissick. And look at how, how he just does a great job of, of not doing that. He ignores the noise. And, you know, once he does see this ball in the air being pitched, he's able to put a foot in the ground, turn and run, not only fighting through a block by Joe Dahl there, but – more importantly, let me get you guys to a better spot. You can see him fighting through the contact there by Dahl and, you know, able to go help help Anthony Harris prevent that touchdown by the Lions on that particular play. You know, is it some game-breaking tackle? No, but ultimately it gives your, your defense another chance on the field. And it just plays like these where, you know, a lot of linebackers and other defensive plays, you are going to see them bite on that play, get out of position, and then ultimately block by Dahl as – as Ty Johnson is able to put put six points on the board, but not Kendricks because he's just so he's just so tuned into what the offense is doing, and he's able to mentally process stuff at a very high level and, and really prevent those types of plays. And here's another kind of ironically similar example where it's it's virtually the same play just to the opposite side. So what you're going to see this time is Marquez Valdez Scantling, number 83 of the Packers. He's going to be the jet motion man towards this time. The defense is right, but then they're going to pitch the ball quickly to Jamal Williams out of the backfield. Look at how again Kendricks doesn't bite on any of the on any of the BS, I guess we'll call it. He he's just so tuned in to exactly what the Packers are trying to do. And as a result, he's able to sift through uh, a couple defensive players, a couple offensive players, and and go make the solo tackle in space. And you know, again, it's just so impressive because a lot of guys are gonna bite on bite on this jet motion and for good reason. You know, it's a solid fake. And especially on such a quick hitting toss, that's tough to react to, but not for a guy like Kendricks and with his ability to read and react and, and really mentally process what the offense is trying to do. It's also really impressive how Kendricks is able to kind of combine both the athletic side of things in terms of the explosiveness, the short air quickness, as well as the mental side of things in his ability to read and react on these plays where he's going to just shoot the gaps and, and make massive splash plays in the backfield for huge losses. And that's exactly what you're going to have here where, you know, the Seahawks left guard and, and center – 
they're going to be working a double team, a combo block between the one tech and Kendricks. And you know, what you're going to see is how Kendricks, once he, once he sees that gap open up, he reads run to the, to the defense's left, I should say. Look at how, you know, Joey Hunt, he's already all out of whack here. Look at how he's able to just put a foot in the ground, show off that short area of quickness, the explosiveness as he, as he accelerates through that hole. Hunt ends up, you know, face first in the turf because he, he's not prepared to block somebody to the athletic caliber of Eric Kendricks as is able to just blow this play up before it even starts essentially. And it's just plays like these that makes Kendricks so special because, you know, a lot of these, a lot of linebackers, they'll have a couple of these a season. Well, Kendricks, he might have one or two every game because he is just so tuned into, you know, once he sees the gap open up, he knows that he's a, he's a very, very athletically gifted man. He's going to take that, he's going to take that chance and try and blow it up in the backfield. And oftentimes he does. And here's another one. This time it's against the Lions where you're going to have the right tackle and right guard, Graham Glasgow. In this case, they're going to be working from the three tech to Kendricks on this play. And, you know, what you're going to see, again, Kendricks is able to read and react to the inside run. He sees this, this uh, A-gap open up. And look at how he's just able to, again, trust his instincts, put a foot in the ground, and go. And at this point, you know, from what I've been taught at least, when you're working these double teams where, you know, especially that linebacker shaded to the inside, you never want to get – in this case, your left arm involved in that because you're ne you never know when you're going to need to bump off and you know just get a piece of Kendricks because even if you're able to just hit him a little bit, you're probably going to be able to deflect him out of the out of this straight path enough to where he's not going to make a play, right? Well, well, Glasgow he doesn't do that. He has that left hand involved, and as a result, you're just going to see him late to late to the point of contact or point of attack, if you want to say, with Kendricks as he just completely whips again and allows Kendricks to you know, blow this play up again in the backfield for a huge loss. And I feel like almost every play that I've showed you guys so far, he's been either in coverage or unblocked against the run, right? And, you know, that doesn't really depict just how good he is in terms of his ability to fight through contact at the point of attack and still make a play. So I did want to toss a couple examples here at the end where, you know, on this play, you're going to see him kind of ricocheting between the right tackle and Hunter Henry as he's still able to get off the block and, and lay a really nice hit on Austin Eckler. But you know, to me, what's kind of most important about this is, you know, you think back to some of the previous linebackers we've had in the series, you know, Deion Jones, for example, at number 93, he was, he was, you know, equally as rangy as Eric Kendricks, maybe a little bit more so, you know, he was a 4-3-8, 40-yard dash guy, he, he was a little bit more of an explosive athlete, but you, you saw the same types of plays being made, right, but the problem was, is when you get a hand on Deion Jones, oftentimes, you'd be able to neutralize him, right, and that's why we saw him trying to backdoor so many plays and evade so many offensive linemen, because he wasn't able to make plays like these at, at really the point of attack, whereas, you know, Demario Davis, for example, in my number 84 video, and I'll link both of those, you know, right, right above my head as well. But, you know, we saw kind of the opposite, right? We saw a guy who was so stout uh, in terms of fighting through contact, but we didn't see the ability to, you know, accelerate and, you know, shoot so many gaps and make so many rangy sideline to sideline plays. Well, Kendricks, he's kind of the best of both worlds. And that's why in the intro, I did say he was incredibly balanced with his, his best attributes coming in terms of his patch, pass coverage ability. And you know, that's really what he is. He's, he is great in terms of his ability to fill and fight through contact at the line of scrimmage against the run, but also his ability to make these beautiful plays working backwards in coverage as well as the sideline to sideline plays. And that's why he is to this point, the, the highest linebacker I've had so far, because, you know, he doesn't really have a hole or a blind spot in his game as a couple of those other guys had. Instead, he is the most well-rounded one to this point. And I absolutely love this last play here because, you know, it doesn't get much more old school or smash mouth style than an ISO running play out of I formation right down the middle, right? And, you know, I'm sure that just as, just as quickly as, and as excited as John Gruden was to dial this one up and, and call it in, Kendricks was equally as excited to just quickly tear it down, right, and absolutely blow it up. And that's what you're going to have here as just watch how he's able and, and willing to take on this block by Al Kingle out of the backfield here, the fullback, as, you know, he's just going to blow him up in the hole, have him essentially on his knees begging for mercy as he, as he deconstructs that block, sheds him, and is able to bring down Josh Jacobs for a short game. But, you know, what's most impressive about it to me is – is look at the other blocks on the play. Let's say this isn't Eric Kendricks. This is just a random replacement level linebacker in here for the Vikings, right? So, you know, just look at the other fits on the, on the play. You have Colton Miller doing a great job of utilizing that strong inside hand on Everson Griffin, making sure that he can't cross his face into this B gap and make the play. So he's, he's walled off. He's out of the play. Then you're going to have a, a great double team here by Richie Incognito and Rodney Hudson where they're getting really good movement on that one tech, working to Ben Gideon here. The, 
the backside linebacker on this play, you can you can easily assume that he's going to be kicked out. And then and then Ingold, he's if this is just a random scrub linebacker, say Kendricks, he gets washed out to the side, and then what we're going to have is this this last defender from the outside here, the outside linebacker, he's going to probably get caught in the wash by Kendricks. And as a result, you're going to have Josh Jacobs, who, you know, he's incredible in his own right. He was number 92 on my list for a reason. You're going to have him one-on-one downfield going up against Anthony Harris. And, you know, what does that spell for Harris? Probably disaster because we all know just how physical and how good Josh Jacobs is at fighting through contact. Well, you know, that that's never going to see the, the light of day as Kendricks is able to shut that down before it even begins, right? But it's just so impressive because, again, if this isn't Kendricks, if, if this is somebody else, this play has a huge rip written all over it just based on the rest of the offensive line and really where the rest of the defense is aligned. But Kendricks just does a, such a great job of, you know, doing exactly what is asked of him in this Vikings defense. And, you know, that's why I have him at number 73 on my list. And as always, if you guys did enjoy this video today, make sure you not only leave a thumbs up, but also leave a comment as well. You know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on my evaluation and ranking of Eric Kendricks here at number 73. But, you know, more importantly, I'd love to hear your own evaluation and ranking of him as well. So be sure to be sure to let me know, you know, was I too high? Was I too low? Or was I just right down in the comment section below? And give me reasons as well. Don't just say too high, too low. You know, try and convince me. Say why he should have been, you know, maybe in the 60s, maybe in the 80s or 90s, you know. I know a lot of people have different varying opinions, so let me know yours down below. But with that being said, if you if you did enjoy this video, make sure you click the subscribe button as well. You know, not only am I going to have 72 more of these in the entire series, there's going to be probably some more Vikings as well, which is kind of surprising to say because I feel like I feel like I've been posting a new Viking every other day thus far to this point. I believe he's the sixth Minnesota Viking that's played that played for their team. Obviously, Everson Griffin's a free agent now. Stephon Diggs is in Buffalo, but but man, they, they had a lot of representation on the Swiss. So if you're a Vikings fan, make sure you not only go get caught up on those previous videos, but also hang in there for some new ones as well. And if you're not a Vikings fan, as I said, there's there's going to be way more players that are not Vikings. So, so I'm sure some of your favorites will be represented. So with that being said, that's all I have for you guys today. I'm mic'd up. Now I'm mic'ing out. Peace, guys.